looking at this week, you know, and looking at the hit that the Trump presidency took from that decision last night, how lasting do you think that is? Well, I don't know how lasting it is, but it was a, a substantial hit. I mean, think of the fact, as you say, we're now into day 22. And here in the first three weeks of, of the Trump presidency, you have a federal circuit court of appeals. Yes, I know that they're the most left-wing court. Yes, I know they're the most reversed by the Supreme Court. But it's still a circuit court of appeals basically saying that the uh, president did not make a persuasive case that this travel ban was necessary to protect national security. So the court is saying that they side with a judge and with the attorneys general of Minnesota and Wisconsin against the president of the United States on the issue of protecting the country. That's a real slap in the face. And the other point is the fact that we're talking about this right now, there's an awful lot to the Trump agenda, protecting jobs, uh, tax reform, Obamacare, um, trade, uh, infrastructure, all of those issues, all of the oxygen about them has been eaten up in this uh, lar long, difficult, and ultimately unsuccessful fight over the travel ban. You, you wonder if this is how the Trump ad administration wants to proceed. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a great point. And you, you couple that, Chris, with the fact that the, the word earlier today was that, you know, they're going to rework this order. I heard Judge Napolitano talking about it earlier and saying, you know, really it needs to be bulletproof. You know, when you put this order out in the first place, it had to be legally bulletproof. Um, that would suggest that there were just, that it was sloppy, that there were missteps in the way that this, this thing was written. So this doesn't have to be the main story. Perhaps it is an indication that they should have handled this differently. Well, you, you got that admission from the new Secretary of Homeland Security, General John Kelly, yeah. who in a congressional hearing said that it had not been rolled out properly. He took personal responsibility, which is a very unusual thing in Washington for anyone to say, <laughs> blame me for it. But in fact, it wasn't his. It was mostly the White House and the top aides around uh, President Trump. But yes, it, it was sloppy. It was, it was sloppy in the way it was drafted, the way that it was rolled out, the lack of consultation with top administration officials, the lack of consultation with congressional leaders. And again, we have spent a week, a third of the presidency on this subject. There's so many things that this president wants to accomplish. And I wonder, is this the most important yeah, steps on uh, the message. So let's move on to some of those other issues. Today, he met with Prime Minister Abe from Japan. He's bringing him uh, this evening back to Mar-a-Lago to play some golf. Um, it, you know, it's an interesting way of dealing with these foreign leaders, and he's building relationships with China as well. He went back on the one China statement that he made right after he became president. Um, what's your take on how he's doing on that front, Chris? Well, it, it, it's interesting. Uh, he, in an interview with me in mid-December for Fox News Sunday, I asked him about the call with the Taiwanese leader, uh, and he, in, in effect, said, well, you know, the one China policy, which has been in place since the 1970s, that we recognize Beijing, mainland China, as the only government of the Chinese, he said that's up for grabs, and that'll be a negotiating tool with a bunch of other issues with it we have with the Chinese in the South China Sea, with devaluation of their currency. And then there was a front-page story in the New York Times today saying that since those comments that President Xi, the president of China, had refused to speak to him. Mm. So the president, President Trump, had to back down, agree, yes, we're going to recognize the one China policy, and he got his conversation. And I think this is a work in progress, a continuing education, that when you're the president as opposed to a candidate, everything you say is very carefully scrutinized. And when you're upsetting decades of established policy in terms of relationships between countries like the U.S. and China, it's not taken lightly by foreign capitals. You've got to be really careful in what you say. Yeah. Um, quick comment on the Kellyanne Conway situation. And does it sort of, you know, go forward from there? Do they have to be careful about the way they discuss the tangential business relationships that exist all across the family? Look, there are a lot of people that have said that this is just going to be a continuing problem, that President Trump did not adequately separate himself from his business interests. I got to say, though, the, I, the spectacle of Kellyanne Conway, a counselor to the president, in the White House briefing room. Remember, she, she's our uh, employee, where she's paid a government salary, shilling for Ivanka Trump and saying, go out and buy Ivanka products. That was so far over the ethics rules about conflicts of interest and the blurring of private and public that a really conservative and loyal Republican like Jason Chaffetz, the chairman uh, of the House Oversight Committee, agreed to launch an investigation yep. as to whether this was a breach of ethics rules. They have got to clear this up. All right. Chris, thank you so much. Good to see you. you.